this tune ever end? It's Beethoven. He's dead. Good. Ruth, dear, have you got a pencil? There's only one thing the crowd and heads of industry hate worse than bad business. Well? Good music. <laughs> Father has certainly collected the crowd heads tonight. Yeah, almost a full house. Three kings, steel, airways, and armaments, and a queen, oil. <laughs> Look at Monsieur Grenier's expression, like a cat stealing cream. I wonder what he's dreaming about. Bigger and better bombs, inspired by Beethoven. Or machine guns. No, no, that's Mozart. Aren't you clever? Mr. McAllen wouldn't know what you were talking about. Just a mechanic. You don't like him, do you? One likes human beings. Is it inhuman to get things done? They're such dull things. Tunnels. Don't sentimentalize them, my dear. McCann's a sort of human mole. It's all right underground, but lost if he comes up in the daylight. Besides, look at his clothes. I was looking at his eye. You're glad that's over. What's the idea, Mr. Lloyd? After a dose of Beethoven, a businessman will listen to anything. Well, your father certainly knows how to wear down sales resistance. <laughs> he should. If any of you folks are interested in dollars, come into the next room and we'll talk about them. Or oh, would any of you like some more music first? <laughs> My chauffeur plays the concertina. Good luck, darling. I'm better at doing things than I am talking about them. Well, they'll listen all right. Millionaires are the worst listeners in the world. Well. Oi, Mac. Keep off figures. Why? Millionaires don't understand them. You treat them like children and... <clears throat> Look after Ruth, will you? Well, I suppose some of you are mighty surprised to find yourselves listening to Beethoven. But I've got a bigger surprise waiting for you. That orchestra was a sort of hors d'oeuvre, and a mighty expensive one, too. But don't let that worry you. We're going to get all that back between us. Shut those doors, my dear, will you please? And Mr. McCallum, the inventor of the Alanite diamond steel, the man who built the Channel Tunnel on the Bahamas Miami Tunnel, remember? He's going to show us how to get it back. Martin, I do wish you'd sit down. You're all probably wondering why I asked you to come here today. Well, I wanted you to meet Mr. Richard McAllen, who has a little proposition to put up to you. You know him already as the man who successfully constructed the Channel Tunnel in 1940. But before he tells you about it, I want to impress two things on your mind. Firstly, I'm as sane as you are. Secondly, Mr. McAllen is a good deal saner. Go ahead, Mac. I am only an engineer putting up an engineering proposition. You may find it a bit fantastic, but I know it can be done. The proposition is the construction of an Atlantic tunnel between England and America. Well, there'll be difficulties, of course. Most of them we already know. And it's quite probable that there'll be others. But if you'll bear with me, I'll try and give you the basic principles. What does make it possible is the fact that alanite steel has proven to be non-porous even under the terrific pressures which we might experience. And the new radium drill invented by my friend Frederick Robbins. Ruth, come here for a minute. Something I want to say to you. Once upon a time there were three bears. Oh, Robbie, you are a fool. There was a big bear, then a medium-sized bear. What do you smoke? Oh, that's rope. Then a tiny little bear like him. He'll be all right. They all looked so hard-boiled. I know, not a soft yoke among them. I hate waiting. When your son was born, Mac and I waited like this for 14 hours. 
It seemed longer to me. Oh, oh, oh. Because of the equalization of pressure. Allowing, of course, for the known depth of the Atlantic and the character of the seabed. Well, here's England, and here's America. A tunnel, like that. Maybe you prefer to express your enthusiasm in Mr. McAllen's absence. Don't all cheer at once. Well? Well, what they say? They're saying it now. They're going to let you build? Probably at my own expense. What do you mean they weren't interested? They could hardly sleep. Don't worry, darling. If you believe in it, they can't stop you. Money. You'll get it. Shall I? Of course. The world needs the tunnel. You make it sound like something heroic. Well, isn't it? You've always been like that. Doing great things, making the world better and safer, and believing all the time you're doing them just to please yourself. Hmm. What do you say, Monsieur Corellier? I think it's an excellent idea. When your tunnel is built, all the other countries of the world will come to me for guns to blow it up. Ten little millionaires feeling mighty fine. One took up tunnel shares and then there were nine. <laughs> oh, very funny. <clears throat> After all, the Bahamas and Miami tunnel makes money. And so will this. And don't forget, the governments will back it. It means employment. Useless employment. That's the sort they prefer. Saves complications. If it was once finished. But how can it be finished? I said if. There'd be more money in it than there is in oil. You leave the Atlantic alone. Oil and water don't mix. It's a crazy scheme. Not so crazy as your merger. Mr. Lloyd and I propose to take up one third of the tunnel shares. What's that? Lloyd and myself, Mrs. Lloyd and Mastin, propose to take up one third of the tunnel shares. What's good enough for you is good enough for me. I'm with you. And don't you try and stop me. I'm trying to get in with you. Well, I guess we may as well all starve together. That is, if my experts approve. You won't starve. You're dead right, I won't. Monsieur Grelier, the tunnel means peace. You make your profits out of war. What do you say? The International Armaments Corporation will take three million shares. Thank you, Monsieur Grelier. Your lead will give the public confidence to take up the remaining shares. Mastin, will you tell McAllen? Right. No. I will. They're going to let me go ahead? You were right. They were listening. I thought they were dead. What's the matter? You're not sorry, are you? I don't know. Now that it's come true, I... I'm frightened. Why? It's so big. It won't be too big for us, will it? Oh, don't worry. This is the ultra-wave television and broadcasting station calling the world. Frank Keith announcing for the English-speaking union worldwide hookup. Today is the third anniversary of the inauguration of the Great Atlantic Tunnel Scheme. We are going to celebrate this birthday by giving the public of the two countries vitally interested an opportunity of seeing some of the progress that has been made in this colossal engineering enterprise. Armies of men have for the last three years been steadily pushing their way under the sea from both sides of the Atlantic. You're now looking at the latest of the completed sections on the English side. No doubt you'll all remember that the chief factor that made the commencement of this work possible was the invention of the radium drill by Frederick Robbins. Vast improvements have been made in this drill which has enabled the work to proceed at a rate which was undreamt of three years ago. The presiding genius behind all this tremendous effort is known to you all, Mr. Richard McAllen, whose great faith and untiring energy has been the inspiration of thousands of workers. You have read of him. You've heard him spoken of. You are now going to see him and hear him speak. Mr. Richard McAllen. 
Today, the new Atlantic Tunnel represents the greatest industry in the world. Down here, far below the Atlantic bed, strewn with the wrecks of centuries, men are working day and night. From both sides of the Atlantic, they are driving their shafts, drawing nearer and nearer to one another. And one day, far below the raging storms of the ocean, they'll meet. And the greatest engineering dream the world has ever known will become an accomplished fact. And to my friend, Mr. Jim Barton, and his co-workers at the American end, I just want to add, we're on our way. Hey! Oh, hey! We've got a date in America. How's the family? It's doing well, sir. Congratulations. Stay on the way, sir. You seem busy. I've got a date in America, sir. Machine okay now, George? Running like a kitten, sir. Gauges. May I remind you that you're married to Ruth, not to a radium gauge. You keep her amused until I come, Mr. Roberts. Yeah, my bright conversation's getting a little tarnished. Try soap. <laughs> come on. Aye. What's the matter now? Take that big parcel with you, the one on top. It's your birthday present to your son. You're a thoughtful sort of an idiot, aren't you? You think of everything. Lucky for you, I do. Daddy, he won't be long. Doesn't he know it's my birthday? Of course he knows. Daddy's always late, isn't he? Yes, but he can't help it. Poor Daddy. Why? Does he mind? Of course he minds. But you see, he's always kept busy. Emergency door extra is ready for the test, sir. Okay, we test anything once. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Hello? All ready for the test. All ready for the test, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. returns the day. Thank you. It's a pity Mummy didn't marry you. <laughs> I know, it's a burning shame. Mac won't be a minute. He's just talking to Harriman. What about? 
radium gauges. The vibration ones or the alpha oscillation ones. Oh, right, right. Who told you about that? Daddy. You ought to be in charge of the tunnel. I'm going to be when I grow up. It's your son's birthday. I want you to meet him and his mother. Thanks, I hear they're both charming. Lloyd, just ran through from New York, says it's most urgent. You better go ahead, dear. I'll meet you at the house. <laughs> well, once upon a time, there were three bears. That old stuff. Yes, Robin, that old stuff. Hurry up, I'll call it in my birthday. Come along, darling. It's going to be a lovely birthday. The guy was getting a bit above himself, keeping you waiting. Hello. Put me through to Mr. Lloyd, please. Hello. Hello, Mr. Lloyd. What is it? We want you in New York. Immediately. What for? I'll tell you when you get here. You'll have to tell me now or do without me. You'll come or you'll do without us. What do you mean? You're the servant of this company, McGill. I'm not its master, and it's time you found that out. Well, I don't quite understand. You're a paid engineer in the service of this company, of which I'm one of the biggest shareholders. Well, I realize that, but I can't leave now. It's impossible. Then, McGillan, you can shut down work on the tunnel. Well, what do you mean? You want to know? Yes. Then do as you're told. Come to New York and find out. Oh. You leave him to me. Ride him gently, Marston. Remember, we can do without him. Isn't it, Jeffrey? Thing marvelous now. Now let me put in another cylinder. Let me. No, let me. Oh, all right. After all, it is yours. Mr. McCullen has just called up on the televisor, madam. Where from the tunnel? No, madam. From his plane. His plane? Uh, put it through to my room, please. Yes, madam. Oh, Robbie, you don't suppose that he. Oh, something must have happened. He wouldn't miss. Oh, wouldn't he? Ruth, I'm terribly sorry, but... Uh, you mean you're not coming? I can't. You must explain to Jeffrey... How can I explain? It's his birthday. I know. I tell you I'm terribly sorry, sorry. but... Sorry. Well, he won't miss me. What about me? What do you mean? Does my disappointment mean nothing? Well, I wouldn't be here if I could help it. It's urgent. The tunnel is... It's got... always the tunnel. Oh, now you're being unreasonable. Is it so unreasonable to want my boy's father to come to his own son's birthday? Don't you realize the tunnel's my job? My job's just being married to it. Please try and understand. Try? Did you try not to disappoint Jeffrey? Yes. I'm sorry, Dad. Of course the tunnel must come first. I wouldn't have missed Jeff's party for anything, but this is important. We'll have lots more birthdays. Sure. What are you going to do? Oh, we'll have a marvelous time. With Bobby. Oh, that's fine. Fine. Hello. Hello! I got cut off. Operator! Something's the matter in New York. I'll let you know when I get back. Look after Ruth and Jeffrey. You don't mind, do you? Well, not a bit. I'm as pleased as a chicken with two hands. You're a grand fellow. I'll bring you back a stick of rock. <laughs> Bye. I'll eat it. Goodbye. Well, if I knew what to do, I'd do it. There isn't anything you can do. Ah, yes, there is. And you have lost the book of words. I'm a fool to cry. I don't like wet parties myself. <laughs> I don't know what I should do without you. You don't even know what to do with me. Perhaps I ought to have married you. Now, don't you worry. You've got the better man. I haven't got him. Oh, yes, you have. You'll see. What about that party? <laughs> oh, oh, we're shit. going to have it now, and it's going to be a lovely party. Yeah, one of those parties people remember when they write their memoirs. And your mother's going to wear a paper hat. Why? <laughs> oh, oh, I don't know. It's, you know, it's just one of those things. 
Hello, hello, everybody. I'm speaking from the penthouse of Mr. Lloyd's residence in New York City. And it's a wonderful night. And yes, wait a minute. Here he comes. I can see Mr. McCollin's airplane now. Well, let's see. Uh... Yes, you look very effective. And you look very angry. Is this the right angle? Very good. I'm never angry. Above all the emotions. Do you mind? Will this be right? Okay. And I once heard you complain that MacAllen was inhuman. Yes, you remember everything that concerns MacAllen, don't you? Hello, everybody. It is now my proud privilege to introduce to you over the air the man that changed a dream into a reality. The man that created the Atlantic Tunnel, Mr. Richard McCollin. Ladies and gentlemen, there's very little that I can tell you about the tunnel that you haven't already heard through the press. So you think I'm inhuman? Aren't you? Well, anyway, I'm not married. I'm not surprised. If I were, I might have the same attraction for you as McAllen. I doubt it. Even marriage couldn't change your infinite monotony. <laughs> I'm in love with you. Thank you. It isn't possible for you to love a man like McAllen. There's a certain charm about a dreamer, even if he dreams of iron and steel. Do you love him? Yes. There's still a tremendous amount of work to be done by everyone connected with it. And if you'll excuse me, I'll get along with my share. Thank you. Oh, oh but say, no, Mr. No, McAllen, no, no. uh, wouldn't you like to tell us some of your personal experiences? Uh, tell us what you and your fellow workers feel like as you burrow your way through the tunnel. Rats. <laughs> well, thank no, you, no, Mr. McCullough. No, 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 wait a minute. No, wait a minute. Listen, what do you do down there at night when you're through? Go to bed. Oh, oh no. Hey, you're sure the tunnel kills a man a minute? Listen, what's the effect of the tunnel on the political situation? Ask me 50 years from now. Oh, come, come on, on now. No, 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 no. You must give us a story. Come on, tell us a story. Well, all right, boys, there's one exclusive fact. Up to now, we have tested and completed the tunnel sections up to and including H. There's another thing that the tunnel has in common with all tunnels. Yeah? It's hollow. <laughs> That's not a bad well, well, I'll put that one in. Hello, man. How do you do? How are Thank you? you. Is that what I came over here for? Yes, and you're going to like it. I hate cheap publicity, and I won't have it. It's not for you to decide. My group controls one third of the tunnel shares. This is a personal matter. You're a paid servant of my company. You excuse me. Certainly. Come in. Ah. Well, here I am. So I see. By the way, is Marston useful to you? Sure. You tell him to leave me out of his publicity or you're going to lose him suddenly. <laughs> it wasn't Marston's idea. Well, he said it was. Oh, she's good at that. It was Valia. Sit down. Do you know why you've come? Well, not to be photographed and interviewed. That way you're wrong. Down there under the Atlantic, you don't seem to realize there's a world crisis on. People are beginning to lose confidence in the tunnel. Oh, but and that reacts on everything connected with it. So far as people are concerned, you are the tunnel. I've got to put you on the front page and keep you there. <laughs> Over my dead body. <laughs> yes, I'll put you on the front page, all right, but it wouldn't last. No, you've got to go places, make speeches, be photographed with the President of the United States and all that sort of thing. Well, what about the tunnel? I suppose it'll build itself. Well, you can't build a tunnel without money. You expect me to find the money. Well, I can't unless the people have got confidence in the tunnel. They believe in you. You're a romantic figure. If we get you back on the front page, People will get back their confidence in the tunnel and the money will follow. Very well. If you want a dancing doll, I'll do it. Bring on your photographer. Half a minute. Nobody's going to look at a photograph of a husky guy like you unless there's a woman in it to give it pep. And I reckon Valia would put pep into a photograph of an Egyptian mummy. Thank you, Father. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I feel as though I want my lunch. Fresh air is much more nourishing. 
And you can smoke your pipe. I don't want my pipe. I want this grapefruit. Besides, you don't like my pipe. Today, I like everything about you. Besides, I want to get away. Somewhere where I can breathe. I see. Fresh air. So fresh that it hurts. Please be happy. I'm terribly unhappy. Well, let's have lunch. Eat, drink. Oh, you'll be merry, all right. Bobby, I think you're the nicest man I've ever met. Yes, yeah, so do I. When I had Jeffrey, it wasn't so bad. But now that he's away at school all the time... I don't want to be a burden on Matt. But I, I'm all alone. When he does come home, his real self stays behind in the tunnel. I've lost him, Robbie. I'm not jealous. But sometimes I wonder... He's never looked at anyone but you. Are you sure? Don't be silly. I want you to do something to please me. Yes, of course. What? Get a job of work. Where? Yes, haven't you heard of it? The hobby of rich people and the curse of the poor ones. Something really worth doing. Just as Mac thinks the tunnel is worth doing. If I were a man and could work in the tunnel, then perhaps I shouldn't hate it so much. You know perfectly well why I'm here. Lloyd and I have found out why the tunnel shares have gone down. Indeed. Because you've been selling them. Indeed. Why? Because I have every confidence in Mr. McAllen. What the devil are you talking about? Have you every confidence in Mr. McAllen? As an engineer. As an engineer, yes. I thought so. Now listen. Well, why not sit down? I think the tunnel will succeed. But the public at the moment is not quite so certain. They are selling their shares at any price. By putting mine on the market, I convince them the scheme will be a failure. When the shares reach rock bottom, I shall buy them all back again. Including those, I hope, of our dear friend Lloyd. Then we shall control the tunnel syndicate. You mean you will? I'm afraid I shan't have the time. I was hoping to be able to find an efficient chairman for the tunnel syndicate. Now, if you throw your shares in with mine, it'll make it so much easier to find the new chairman. And McAllen? McAllen is a servant of the company. You and I will be the company. All right, I'm with you. Sterilize your hands in here. But I haven't touched anything. We don't take any chances. The trouble is this new gas is getting into the tunnel. It takes the nervous system, a kind of paralysis. It's infectious? Yes. Of course, we're taking every precaution. But when people come into contact with cases every day, these nurses, for example. That's so. How long does the paralysis last? Well, we haven't found a cure for it yet. But I think perhaps it might wear off in time. It's doubtful, though. We've one case with his eyes affected. He's practically certain to go blind. How does she come to be here? She volunteered to work in this section. But she must have known it as dangerous. McCallan would never have allowed it. That's why she wouldn't let us tell him. I'm all right now. Of course you are. We'll get you home. You'll be better there. Yes. Now I must be getting back. My eyes. You're quite.
quite sure there's nothing really the matter with them. No, no, of course not. A little rest and treatment. You'll soon be yourself again. You've been overdoing it. Thank you, Doctor. That's right. Just rest and keep quite quiet. Well, oh, she's all right. Quite all right. Here. I want it. Mrs. McKellen is very ill. Tunnel sickness. Don't tell her. Her husband was told, of course. Of course. Goodbye. Mr. Robbins. Hmm. We can't have this sort of thing, you know. What do you mean by frightening us all like this? Don't pretend, Robbie. I know what's the matter with me. But you... Answer it, please. Hello. Hello. Hello, Robbie. Hello, Meg. Was that Ruth? No, where are you? I'm in the plane on the way home. Be there in about three hours. Oh, where is she? I don't know. What's the matter? Nothing wrong, is there? No. Where is she? She's not here. You mean she's not in the house? No. You sure? Of course. Oh, bye. Why did you make me say that? Because I won't be here when he gets back. What on earth are you talking about? I'm going away and taking Jeffrey with me. Are you mad? I should be if I stayed. But why? Because of this. But that won't make a difference to, to, to Mac. He loved you. He loved you more than ever. That's just pride. Oh, Robbie, you know me better than that. You've got to help me. Invent something. Lie to him. Tell him anything. The only thing I beg of you... Don't ever let him know the truth. Oh, but I can't do it. It's impossible for you and for me. For him and for me. Robbie, you can, you must. But I see him every day. How can I? For three years, he's hardly known that I exist. He ceased to need me when the tunnel took him. I could bear that. I had something to give him then. I made him a home. I gave him a son. I loved him. You still love him? Yes, I still love him. But does he still love me? I won't have him stay with me out of pity, just sorry for me. He's no longer alone. Barbara Lloyd, that doesn't mean anything. How do I know? Oh, Robbie, I... I do add to your troubles, don't I? That's all right, but... But how can I tell him? Robbie, you must! I'm nobody else! <laughs> Well, everything's fine. Chairs are up again. I've got the money and we're going ahead full steam. Where's Ruth? Look here, what's the matter? On the plane just now, I... Hey, what is this, a joke? No. What is it then? Ruth's gone. Gone where? I don't know. You don't know? I'm trying to tell you that she's left you. She's not coming back. She's not coming back? No. Why not? You don't mean to tell me that there's someone else who... Why should you think that? And why not? You've neglected her ever since this tunnel was started. How many times have you broken your dates with her? And then sent me to amuse her? She must be sick of the sight of me. And now for months you've been away in New York with the papers full of you and Valia Lloyd. Well, that was publicity. Policy. Surely you told her that... I told her? But did you ever bother to? You've left her to think what she liked. And now she's left you and you can't understand it. Where is she? You're too late. By several years.
DEQ, Section E, Tesco K. Max? I'm through. You're through? You mean you're leaving the tunnel? Yes. I can't work with you anymore. Why? Please don't ask me. I don't need to. Ruth leaves me and you can't work with me anymore. You think I can't understand that? Is that why? No. Is there any other reason? No. Mac! We've been friends for 20 years. That's over. But you're not quitting. You're going through with it. Whatever happens, you're going through with it. OK, checked and approved. The moving quarter must be made to turn smoothly back and forth. Very good, sir. Mr. Robbins, sir. Hello. Hello, Mr. Barton. How are Had you? Had a good trip? Fine, thanks so much. All right, Charlie. Won't you sit down, Mr. Roberts? Okay, boys. Well? Well, we've run into the same trouble that you've just beaten. Strata leaks. I've come over to find out how you plugged them up. With the bodies of 50 men. I shut the gates off. Cemented off and drilled through. I wish I could get that out of my mind. 50 men to save the lives of thousands. That's not your fault, Barton. That's the kind of bargain that the tunnel's been driving with us for years. Yes. Years. Years out of the lives of an army of men. Billions of dollars. The hopes of two nations sunk in that hole. It's got to come through. It will come through. And when it does, it'll all be worth it, Robbins. Yes, to those for whom the tunnel is built. I sometimes wonder about the builders. Ha! Take McAllen. He'll go down in history. There'll be a statue of him in every square. And a statue's a figure of a man in hard, cold stone. By the way, how is Mac? Still as bad a poker player as ever? I don't know. Haven't played with him for some time. Several years. But what's the matter? You were his best friend. The tunnel needs him and he needs me, so we're together. What about some lunch before I go? Sorry. I've got to fly back at once. I've got to go down. Oh, well. Good luck. We'll be meeting in the middle. We're coming. As fast as we can. The Atlantic Tunnel will soon be an accomplished fact. <laughs> the significance of this achievement should not be lost on any one of us. For with the completion of the tunnel, we shall have accomplished not merely a remarkable feat of engineering, but something far greater. We shall have created a vital artery between the peoples of England and America, through which we'll pour a vast new commerce, bringing with it a common sharing of each other's progress, a closer understanding of each other's problems. Yeah. An artery through which will course the lifeblood of our two nations flowing into the heart of Anglo-American friendship. I tell you, the Atlantic Tunnel will be greater than any treaty. It will constitute the closest tie that could unite our English-speaking nations. The President of the United States. I heartily endorse the sentiments expressed by the Prime Minister. Furthermore, when this tunnel is completed, 
Sums of money hitherto wasted on wages of soldiers and munitions of war will be diverted into useful and peaceful channels. The nation of the world will be able with complete security to reduce their armaments to an unprecedented minimum. Hello, Mr. Robbins. Hello, Jeffrey. I say, when are you going to stop growing? You'll be bigger than your father soon. I hope so. Mr. Robbins, you are going to talk to Mother this afternoon, aren't you? You know, I'm old enough to work in the tunnel now. Yes. I suppose you'll realise what you're asking your mother to do. Yes, I do. Do you? Well, she's so grand, she'd understand. <laughs> Will you? All right, I'll do what it is. Where is she? There she is. Oh, isn't she lovely? Oh, lovely. Oh, that? Does it go? Of course it goes, Mr. Robbins. I beg your pardon. Cut some of these white roses, Mary. Yes, madam. And these red. That's Robin. <laughs> <laughs> a rope by any other name. Well, huh? oh, Mary. How is he, Robbie? Well, your first question ought to be, how are you, Robbie, dear? How are you, Robbie, dear? Yeah, well, I'm all right. Max, not so good. He shuts himself off from everybody. He won't talk to anybody except about business. Surely he talks to you. Well, no. he won't talk to me anymore. Come on, pull yourself together, you'll be all right. All right, boys, take it to the hospital. Well, what do you want? It's the men, sir. They're just about done. What's the matter with them? It's hill in section, K. The temperature's rising with every yard. I think. Well, what do you think? I think we're driving straight into a submarine volcano. Sir. Oh, rubbish. That'll mean diverting the tunnel. It might take years. Where's Robin? Mr. Robin, sir. Oh, uh... Never mind. I don't like the look of that. Report it to the control room. my partner and myself. If Monsieur Grelier goes, we go too. But listen, gentlemen, you can't leave the tunnel now. Why, it'd be flooded in a month, and everything that you put in it would be lost. You can still save it. You've got to save it. Give me three months' time, and I'll guarantee you that I'll find out. Can you guarantee me my money? There are bigger things than money. We don't deal in them. I'm very sorry, Mr. McAllen. Goodbye. 
But he's been trying to explain. It may not be the real Quaker, only an offshoot. Tell that block at that. Okay, you're not going to throw me down, are you, Mr. Lloyd? Not up to me. There are only two shareholders now that count. Grelier and Martin. You still believe in me, don't you? I back you because I believe in you. I still believe that if this job could be done, you're the man that could do it. But I can't put any more money in. Atlantic tunnels, 29 and a half. I'm sorry, McGowan. I'm sorry, Mac. I wish I could help. Money. The tunnel has brought you nothing but unhappiness. Does it matter? Yes. To me. Thank you. The tunnel. It's broken you, just as it's breaking me. What has the tunnel to do with you? It brought you into my life. I could have made you very happy, Mac. That's the way it is. Well, Mac, you can count them out. They put you in a tough spot. You said it. I told them if they let us drill for another mile or so, I did my best to convince him. The market closed steady. Father. Yes, my dear? Chesapeake, 46 and a half, 45 Why did you turn square. against him? Because he failed. Atlantic tunnels, 29, 28, and 716. But it wasn't his fault. It was just bad luck. The world only recognizes two things, success and failure. And luck doesn't enter into it. Atlantic tunnels, But it must. 28. You're not going to desert him. I put almost everything I possessed into this tunnel scheme because it represents an ideal, world peace through the union of the English-speaking peoples. It's been a dream of my life. You think I want to see it wasted? Then give Mac another three months. You can put up the money yourself. I haven't got it. But you can get it. You think that's easy? You go try. I am trying. Please, Father, because I asked you. I've never refused you anything. But the matter doesn't rest in my hands now. Gia, the whole situation lies with Mostyn. It would be Mostyn. He holds a controlling block of shares in the tunnel syndicate. In fact, their present unsatisfactory state is his doing. How? He threw a colossal number of shares on the market, stampeded it, in fact. And then when he knocked the bottom out, bought them all back and a lot more beside. Mostyn. By this time tomorrow, every tunnel share will be on the market. You won't be able to give them away. And the day after? We shall control them all. And then? Those fools have no courage. McGowan's right. This volcano may delay the thing three months. Oh, I want to talk to Mr. Mostyn. Do you mind? I was just going. Mr. Mostyn is fortunate in everything. Aren't you? Always. Goodbye. You could afford to finance the tunnel work for three months, couldn't you? I could. Well, why don't you? Throw good money after bad. Huh? But it might save the tunnel. Or isn't that important? It might ruin me. That's much more important. Have a cigarette? What's on your mind? You've always gotten everything you've wanted, haven't you? Always? No. Not quite. You wanted me. Well, you still got the first refusal, or is it the fifth? How much do you want me? How much? In dollars. Oh, I see. A bargain. Mm-hmm. Well, well, I had no idea you were so feminine. I don't know what you mean. 
you indulge in a little spectacular self-sacrifice and our mutual friend, McAllen, gets the benefit. What about me? Shall I tell Mac that he can go ahead? No. I'll tell him myself. If you had the money to carry on for three months, you'd know, one way or the other. Yes, but who'd put up the money? I will. You? Well, why not? One of the biggest shareholders in the tunnel. I don't want to lose the money I've already invested. I always thought you were against me. I can only say I'm sorry. That's all right. This is the Atlantic Tunnel Company staff broadcast. As was announced in our bulletin an hour ago, Mr. McAllen has returned to New York. The tunnel safety men report that conditions in Section K have greatly improved. There has been no trace of gas during the last 24 hours. No trace of gas. There's plenty of hot air. I'm not going to carry on with this job. I hey, all the money's been used up. They kill it up, too big. I've done what I can with them, but conditions are too bad. You better talk to the men yourself. Come along here, men. I have news for you. There are two things necessary for building this tunnel. Money and courage. Well, we ran out of money, but we didn't run out of courage. We all know what we're up against down there, and all we want is a chance to carry our job through. Speak for yourself. I wouldn't ask you to do anything I wouldn't do myself. You know that, don't you? I, I'll say that for you, Mac. Uh, all right. Now I fixed up the money. Now I want to know who's going with me. Very well. Mr. Robbins and I will go together. We'll see you when we get back. But if we have to finish the tunnel ourselves, it may take us some little time. I'm with you, sir. Thank you, Sandy. Me too, sir. All Come right. on, George. All right, let's go. I'm coming too, sir. My friend? You and I have known each other a number of years. It's a source of great satisfaction to me to know that my confidence in you hasn't been misplaced. Sorry to interrupt you, but I have a disturbing piece of information. The tunnel is to be carried on experimentally for three months. I suppose it wouldn't be news to you to know who'd supplied the money. No. And our agreement? I'm sorry. Idle curiosity, perhaps, but why did you do it? Hello? Miss Lloyd, sir. Is there any message? Tell me as well, I'll be right along. Ten minutes. Very good, sir. I see. You get everything you want, don't you? Always. And everything that's coming to you. I'll rest, Pat. Can I drop you? <laughs> no, no, no. Good night. Good night. Just a moment. I think you ought to change your mind. Cigarette? Thanks. No, I shan't change my mind. I'm sorry. Thanks. I'm sorry too. Good night. Good night.
Thank you, men. I certainly appreciate your sticking to your jobs. Here's some more that feel the same way that you do about it. Now, we're going to open these doors. We're going into Section K. Communicate with the tunnel mouth. The men won't hang back as long as they know we're here and it's safe. Right, sir. They'll believe it's safe enough if he tells them your own son is working in the tunnel now. My son? Hello, Dad. Hello, son. Get your masks on. to send down the night shift. Section K is reported all clear. The trains are waiting to take you down now. Along, sir. What is the meaning of this? He's your son. The tunnel's the right place for him. Who said so? Ruth. We only want men down here. I know. That's why I've come. Yes, you are, but nearly a man, aren't you? I hardly knew you. But I've wanted to come for years. Your mother stopped you, huh? Yes, she did. Mm. But only until I was old enough. She said she wanted me to be of some use to you when I came, and not just a burden. I rather wish you hadn't. It isn't very healthy down here. But I don't want it to be healthy. I hope it's good and dangerous. Why? Well, it's a bit of a responsibility, being your son. Oh. That's why I'd have hated a soft job. You see, the fellows at school always expected me to do the dangerous things. Because of you. Oh. And I did, too. Well, we'll let you stay. Really, Dad? You can go on this ship. We're just changing over. When you come off tonight, we've got to have supper together. We've got a lot to talk about. Well, that'd be grand. Well, my lad, you don't know what work is. <laughs> Look after him, will you, Harriman? He's on this ship. All right, sir. Don't forget tonight, Dad. All right, Frank. All right, sir. Thank you. Well, that's good.
Always working. Good. Good idea. Yes. <clears throat> What'd you say? Oh, no, I think... Thanks. There's a lady to see you. Oh, Miss Lloyd. Ask her to come in. Yes, ma'am. Will you come in, please? How do you do, Mrs. McAllen? Perhaps you'll remember we met once when the tunnel was first planned. Yes, of course. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Please, may I speak to you alone? Mary, will you bring some tea? We're alone now, Miss Lloyd. You wanted to talk to me? It's very kind of you to see me. Why not? I liked you very much when we met before. And I like you. I wanted to know you better then, but not now. I should be afraid of liking you again. Don't be afraid. Won't you tell me why you've come? Did my husband send you? Why do you ask that? Did he? No. I'm glad. I didn't think he'd do that. Then you know why I've come? Thank you, Mary. But perhaps Miss Lloyd will call. Certainly. Milk? Thank you. No sugar. No, I don't know why you've come. But I suppose there's something you want me to do? I want you to divorce Mac. I thought so. On what grounds? Does that matter? I think it matters very much. I love him. So do I. How can you say that? You deserted him when he most needed help. You took away his home, his son. Even his best friend. How could you do it? What right have you to ask? Every right. When you wrecked his life, you wrecked mine. What do you suppose it's been like for me all these years? Waiting for something to happen. Pretending to myself that he might care for me if you weren't there. Give me the chance to make him happy. Oh, my dear. I'm so sorry for you. You're not. You're only sorry for yourself. I can't understand how you can be so callous. Can't you see how he's suffered? How he's changed? Are you blind? Yes. Quite blind. My dear, I am so sorry.
What's the matter? Gas explosion. From section K. Close the section. How many men are there in section K? Hundreds. They're just changing over. Changing now? Close the section for God's sake! Have you seen my son? Close the section! But my son for is... For God's sake, close the section! This is the Baird television station of the English Speaking Union calling the world. It is with the greatest regret that we have to announce the most terrible disaster to the Atlantic Tunnel, in which it is feared many hundreds of lives have been lost. The accident occurred in Section K, and it was found necessary to close the emergency doors of this section in order to save the whole of the tunnel workings from being affected, which might have resulted in the loss of many thousands of lives. The time has come when we can no longer cherish our illusion. We cannot blind ourselves to the far-reaching consequences of this disaster. The destruction of the Atlantic Tunnel may mean the destruction of the peace and sanity of the civilized world. We know only too well that the Eastern Federation of Powers has long been preparing for an opportunity to strike at the sovereignty of the people of the Western Hemisphere. This is their opportunity. But we have within our reach a mighty weapon of defense that the people of the British Empire and the people of the United States of America pledge themselves to stand shoulder to shoulder and no power in the world can be strong enough to defeat them. The President of the United States Inspiring declaration of the Prime Minister is one so fraught with the fervor of our own love of liberty that there can be but one answering cry from the heart and conscience of every true American. And that cry is, we stand together. Yeah. Yeah. We, the English-speaking peoples of the world, have more than a common tongue, more than a common tradition. We have a common trust. The most sacred trust in the history of mankind, and that, my friends, is to preserve the eternal light of progress in the temple of humanity. Yeah. To those who would extinguish that light, we say in the immortal words of Lincoln, it shall not perish from the earth. And by the grace of God and the glory of these united people, our civilization shall not perish. Yeah. Yeah.
There's Mac. Is Jeffrey with him? I don't know. I can't see. There was somebody. <laughs> Don't worry, Robbie. If anything's happened to Jeffrey, I won't. They're against him, Robbie. Let's go to him. You all right? Back. You can't. It's suicide. I've got to find out what happened. But the volcano. I want four volunteers to go with me. Get them. I'll get you three. Four. I'm coming with you. Bring them along. My son! My son! My son! My son! My son! My son! Hello? Hello? List of known casualties and missing. Are you set? Go ahead. Simon Brown, dead. Robert Turner, dead. John Graham, missing. Jeffrey Marlin, dead. Who? Marlin, madam. Jeffrey Marlin. Richard Olson, missing. Do you know if Jeffrey McAllen is... I don't know yet, madam. <laughs> My son also. <laughs> John Adams, missing. William Silwood, dead. Is that you, Robbie? George Bromley. Is Jeffrey all right? Dead. Is he, Robbie? Tell me, is Fred Jeffrey all right? Jefferson, missing. John Why Jefferson, don't you answer me? Dead. It, it's cruel. Francis Turner, dead. Who's standing there? John Smithson, it's, missing. It's not Jeffrey, is it? Robert Burton, concussion. Who is it? Arthur Stewart. Who is it? Unknown man, under 20, unrecognizable. Get out of here. Oh, Get out. Very good, sir. Mac. I see. You did work in the tunnel, didn't you? Oh, Ruth. Why didn't you trust me? Mac, is Jeffrey all right? Well, he couldn't have suffered very much, honestly. It must have been over very quickly. The smoke would have... Yes. Pretty hard on us both, my darling, isn't it? I did like him so much. He liked me, too, I think. Silly kid. Thought I was sort of a god. And the god let him die, Ruth. Never stretched out a hand to help him. Give me a little comfort if you can, dear. I need it. Latest report from Section K, temperature rising. I've got the men. Harriman and McLean and Seawood have volunteered to go back into the tunnel with you. Fine, bring them along. You can't go. I must. I won't let you. You're all I've got left in the world. I love you so. Must your work take everything? Yes. It has taken everything. Oh, I'll get back my sight, they say. But who will give me back my son? Oh, my dear. You're right, it's taken everything. But if I had my choice again, and my life again, I should do just the same. Because I believe... I believe that my work will bring peace to the world. Peace? 
say that you believe it. If you believe it, yes. Tell me to go, then. Kiss me and tell me to go. I want what you want. I believe what you believe. I love you. And I tell you to go. Never get through that temperature.
Hello, Mac. Hello. Jim Barton. Hello, Mac. How's it going? Okay. The Sioux boy. What do you make it? About 45 feet. So do we. Well, we're ready to blast. If you take the risk. Let's chance it. Okay. Let her go, boy. Drill. Today is a great day, perhaps the greatest day in the history of the English-speaking people. The Atlantic Tunnel is an accomplished fact. At the American end, the opening ceremony is being performed by the President of the United States. We are now taking you over to the English end, where a similar ceremony is being performed by the ruler of the British Empire. <laughs> 